are live in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. It is Draw 10 Action at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Today we have a Battle of Atlantic Canada, as it will be Prince Edward Island and Team Dennis Watts from Summerside taking on Prince Newfoundland and Labrador, skipped by Will Butler and their team from Stephenville and St. John's, Newfoundland. My name is Al Cameron, joined on the broadcast today by Gord Coppathorne, as we have two teams looking to finish strong here in the preliminary pool. And it will be Newfoundland Labrador with Last Rock Advantage in this first end. We'll run down the lineups very quickly. It will be Prince Edward Island shooting first. They play out of the summer side. The skip is Dennis Watts. The vice skip is Jackie Reed. Second, Terry Arsenault. And the lead is Allison Waddell. Newfoundland Labrador playing out of the Caribou Curling Club in Stephenville and the Remax Center in St. John's. The skip is... Will Butler, the vice skip, Aaron Porter, the second, Nick Codner, and the lead is Brooke Godsland. And worth noting that the two Saskatchewan male players, Will Butler and Nick Codner, the two youngest players in the field. Will just 17 years old, Nick just 16 years old. And it's very interesting always to see young players out of Newfoundland Labrador because that is a province that is on the rise in youth curling. And Gord, very interesting match as we got two teams that are looking to finish out this preliminary pool play uh, on a winning note. Well, absolutely. There's still plenty of curling for each team. One striving for their first win and, and, you know, their future ahead of them. So any momentum is good. And they still have games the next couple days with pride on the line and all kinds of things. So everything's got purpose. Newfoundland Labrador, they are 0-5, but boy, they've been in every game and the really heartbreaking loss in this morning's draw. They were tied up coming home with Hammer against Manitoba and Manitoba was able to steal the win. And Prince Edward Island, one and four, uh, but again, the record really not indicative of how these teams have performed here in okay, Prince cruising. Albert. Oh, this is the uh, second game we've got to watch at PEI, and their first one okay. was actually a really close and well-executed match, just came out on the wrong side of a couple of ends. So absolutely, keep the momentum going. PEI did win its first game, playing uh, Ontario's Scott McDonald. Lost four in a row, but again, they've hung tough in most of those games. So, And again, both these teams, neither one will advance to the championship pool. They will move into the seeding pool beginning tomorrow, where they will determine they'll play the three teams from the other pool. And that will set up the seedings and the pools for next year's event, the Canadian 2023 Canadian Mix that will take place in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. So what we've seen progressing a little is that this sheet's been running a little on the straighter side. Like you can see there, a, a hit is moving a few inches at best. So it'll be good to watch to see how they decide to approach this. First end, quite often fairly clean. But we'll see how they control the front area in front of the house. The straighter the ice, the more you got to get into a kind of a tap style game and really own the tight guard zone. So already, we'll see how it goes. You're right, though, but they're already a little bit of a difference in that most of the teams have thrown up a corner uh, first end with Hammer, and we see Newfoundland Labrador electing to play the hit on the shot in the rings, and maybe a reflection of some youth there, and just trying, like you say, that's a not an uncommon strategy for junior curling is to make some shots early on and get a handle on the ice. Nerves are a thing. It never hurts to have one end of everybody throwing two rocks to get the game going. Yeah, the inclination on straight ice is to get your guards longer, but you get to a point where it's too straight for guards. So then you really got to play taps and hits and rolls and a lot of creative weight shots. So just slide into the top 12. So it is hittable now for Newfoundland Labrador. And if I'm Newfoundland, I'm happy with this situation because you're getting chances to figure out what a hit and two foot roll looks like because that's quite likely how you're going to win this game. Brooke Godsland playing her second shot of this end and trying to get the roll into the wings there. Let's stay in. It will not. So that is an exceptional choice of weight. Nothing harder than that because you need three, four inches of curl and you need to have the whole house to roll through. So short of moving multiple rocks, you shouldn't be throwing more than that. So that was a good practice shot for him, frankly. Terry Arsenault, and look out, like a freight train. Dennis Watts, as threatened, coming out to sweep. He was apparently taking a little heat from his teammates for not coming out soon enough to help his teammates sweep. So 
he's going to take care of that right away and show that skips can sweep too. Well, you get cold out there once in a while. You need some <laughs> exercise. Like a bat out of hell, he came out of the house. <laughs> Arms flailing, just don't fall down. Tell them I come out and uh, take care of it for them. <laughs> good team player there. Strategically, as a skip, I took one. Out. Here's another good chance for Newfoundland to learn the sheet. Most teams have been playing outside in on their hits, and very rarely are they getting inside on their hits. So he put center broom a little inside out on release. Call that a solid board, low control, and nose hit. So they hit where he put his broom. There's a lesson learned. I'll stay here for this one. <laughs> one and done is Dennis Watts, apparently. Clean. Terry clean. Arsenal playing the open hit. Just clean. Good, good, good. Just clean. A little bit jacky. Just jacky a little bit. Good throw, Terry. Good wait. So if anything, they were two inches outside of where he put the broom. I'm not saying call negative ice, but if you're playing inside out releases, you're pretty much calling negative ice. Nick Codner made history. Last March in Lethbridge, the youngest player, Careless. we'll always have to add a little asterisk, believed to be the youngest player ever to play at the Tim Hortons Briar. We can't uh, track down those records from the 1932 Briar, so we can't say definitively there wasn't a 14-year-old there, but Nick, as a 15-year-old, did step into the lineup last March in Lethbridge to play for Newfoundland Labrador. He was there as the alternate, but got into the lineup for Nathan Young's team. Control. The game is getting younger, no different than most other sports like hockey. It's good to see. So now if I was them, I might have taken a run at it inside out just to see what they do for down the road. But. Jackie Reed representing the left-handers out there. Throwing this in a counterclockwise rotation. It's going to be up to Terry Arsenault to see if he can drag it over. Good scrub there by Terry. That was a nice throw. As a coach, I like to see that. When we saw her in the first game, she seemed very, let's say stiff, very um, tight through her shoulders, and she was using a lot of her body to throw the rock. That one was calm, and her arm and wrist, and it was a really, really big improvement. I'm happy to see that. Here's Aaron Porter. Yep. 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 Right to it. 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 Will it hang in the rings? It will. Good scrub by that Newfoundland Labrador front end. And if you haven't figured it out by now, folks, Gord is a coach. <laughs> Does a lot of coaching in Alberta. Same way. In fact, uh, I'm sure we'll have to keep his eyes on this Same. sheet because one sheet over is that uh, Alberta team. And you've worked closely with Kai McCauley over the years, the second for Team Alberta. Yeah, I've known Morgan for many, many, many years, and I've worked with Kai for probably eight or so. We will keep you updated on the other three games on the ice, and even with some uh, re repercussions on how things will shake down to determine the four teams from each pool that will move into the championship pool. That's a big game on sheet two. I think winner moves on if I had my math right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Great sweep, Terry. So all these shots you're seeing right now, these hitting two foot rolls, if it's me out there, I get a rock somewhere tight to the house and everything after that is hit and roll underneath of it. Tap something up, hit and roll off of it. It's so straight you can't trust a draw. So you try to bait your opponent into trying the draw. They leave it partly open and then hit and rollville. Corner guards will be very similar, it's still just hit and roll. The nice thing about a corner guard is you can get a little bit higher to get away with it, but. Open end here. We'll get our first look at Dennis Watts. Prince Edward Island skip. So outside in with about three inches of ice. 
I would suspect this will be nose or just a slight roll in. See how he throws. Gary Arsenault trying to get a little bit of movement. That will roll off the circle. So a chance for Newfoundland Labrador and Will Butler to get a sense of draw weight. Just a little out on So that's about four or five where, where they put the broom is roughly where the rock hits. So regardless of what's going into it, that's how you just got to read these shots and let the sweepers pull them out if you're a little narrow. You're, you're not, you're, don't be afraid to be a little tight on your line. Definitely straighter ice today than it was yesterday. On this sheet anyways. Well, we're going to get a chance to see inside out. We have about two feet of curl outside in. Let's see what inside out does. Shade heavy right now. Okay, you're already curling, so just... That's a good ad. I think you can wait a while, guys. Back eight. Okay, just let it sit. It's close to being gone. Yeah, yeah, that should be all. Okay. Okay. Just a really big add on that one. I'll my stopwatch here. I'm curious what they considered a really big add. Inside out, usually a little bit heavier than outside in because you're going against the common path of all the practice ice and everything. So a little add would not have been unexpected to me. And now we get a return attempt at draw weight. According to them, it's about a foot and a half of curl. Yep. Oh, nope, he's going outward. Never mind. Good. Really good. Just throw it on the tee. Really good. Terry can stay inside now. Terry can go inside now. 15. 15 seconds hog to hog. Inside out, so. I assume that's pretty close to what's been going all week. I heard a lot of 15s on the, on, on the broadcast the last couple of days. That's blazing fast ice here. And that ended up at the back 12, so. So yeah, 15 and a half sweeper list to tee. That's pretty quick. So the blank attempt will be taken on by Will Butler to close out this first end. And then Labrador looking to take Hammer into the second end. Kind of an ideal spot for a blanked end. <laughs> One foot into the house, a little inside out, or outside in, and then roll out. I get an eight five. Okay, Nick. Yep. 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 Yes. Yep. We'll see if they can yep. drag it out here. Uh, yep. Uh, the way maybe Brooks. Nope. Nope. Close. Close. That was on the nose, out of his hand. So it will be a single point for Newfoundland Labrador. And Prince Edward Island will have a hammer when we come back after this. Back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. We'll head into the second end of this Atlanta Canada showdown between Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland Labrador. Newfoundland Labrador will take one in that first end, a blank attempt that was on the nose. And, you know, Gord, I always like to ask coaches about that very scenario where you uh, are trying to blank the first end, you end up with one. And I always remember 
uh, a coach telling me, you know what, I try to tell our teams that that's not a terrible thing. Being in the lead is never a bad thing. I have no qualms with taking a point in the first act. I really don't. You get some, some progress, you get some momentum, you have a lead, they need two to get back ahead of you. All it takes is one blank and you take control of the ends back. There's all kinds of storylines. At the same time, as a coach, I can also rationalize the opposite <laughs> to my team saying, oh, you only gave up one, don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, but it is, uh, some people look at that and think, oh, what a miss, but, you know, I'm, I'm in the lead, and if I'm leading by one at the end of the game, that's that's all that matters. That point could be the winning point. I'm not as huge of a proponent of scoreboard managing as much as momentum managing. Sure. And getting on the scoreboard and moving is momentum, especially with younger people. Yep. Yep. You know, you get the give up one, give up one, give up one. You get that routine going and it just sinks you. So to take one to start, never a bad thing in my book. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the conclusion I've come to as well. That uh, Being in the lead is always going to be better than tied or trailing. So we'll see if uh, the corner guard goes up. Looks like there's going to be a guard called here. Like I was saying earlier on, when ice is this straight, you almost have to throw the standard guard and draw book out the window, and you either do things backwards. You throw it in the front row, or throw it in the house first, and then guard it, which is what they've ended up doing, or you throw everything really tight and use taps and angles to your benefit. We'll see PEI lead Allison Waddell. She's 42 years old. She's the executive director with the PEI Golf Association. The first female executive director in the history of Golf Canada, as well as the PEI GA. Yep. And uh, many in curling circles will remember Allison yep. as the former executive director of the None of It yep. Curling Association. She actually represented yep. None of It at a couple Scotties. Roll, roll big, Jackie. Yep. But also has played for PEI in the past at the National Mixed in 2017. So I'm going to give a huge asterisk advantage to whichever team gets a rock under those guards first because they're really long, so the raises and the runbacks are going to be complicated and there's no way you're going to be able to draw a rock to anything under there. So we'll see who wins the cat and mouse hit game first. You know, it does tend to help if you pick the right color rock though. Yeah, that's never a bad thing. <laughs> There is Nick Codner, 16 years old. He was 15 when he participated at the uh, Tim Hortons Briar last March. He's a grade 11 French immersion student at Holy Trinity Regional High School in Torbay, Newfoundland, Labrador. Also played at the U18 Nationals last uh, May in Oakville. Whoa, 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 whoa. This looks like a tasty roll. That's exactly what we're talking about. Very so that's nice. where long guards are going to be, uh, and I'm going to call halfway long in this game. With ice this straight, it's long to me, because they're going to try this draw here, and highly unlikely you're going to get more than a corner buried. Weight control was the key on that shot, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. That was a ten and a half. So that, to most people, is control, and that's a great weight to be throwing on this ice. There's Terry Arsenault. He turned 47 on Monday. His customer fulfillment lead at MDS Coding. And uh, he good. and Dennis will be Jackie's playing for Prince Edward Island at the Everest Canadian Curling Club Championships that begin in a couple weeks at West Edmonton Mall. You heard that right, West Edmonton Mall in the ice arena there. And you'll be able to watch action from those Everest Club Nationals right here on Curling Canada's YouTube channel, produced by our great friends at IKS Live. I'm quite looking forward to seeing that. We've been to West Edmonton Mall many times and watched lots of people skate in circles. I'm curious <laughs> to see what Curling Rocks will do there. Well, Curling Canada is sending our chief ice technician, Greg Iwasco, to install and maintain the ice there. So should be as good a conditions as you could expect in uh, a very tricky environment to produce curling ice. Yeah. Good and the audible here, Butler, I think. Get it passed so you can't play a double of any sort. Not an ideal spot to bluff that. Terry got probably six more inches of curl on his draw. Both of them unswept draws. 
So that could be an interesting advantage for PEI. Veterans know how to put a little bit of pixie dust on their releases sometimes, don't they? Oh, just a little less of an in-out, a little softer oh. on the release. There's lots of ways to get a couple few, a couple inches more. Speed wobble there from Terry. Yep. Terry's no stranger to national championships. Yep. He's also competed in the national five-pin yep. bowling championships as well as eight-ball yep. pool. Yep. Terry's actually getting too much curl out of this one. So the weapon can also be a detriment. Little light. Victory. I had the pleasure of curling with Kevin Folk last year. And his rocks by far curled the most out of all of us <laughs> with his choice of release, but I was not about to tell a three-time Briar contender that his release was not what I wanted. <laughs> Probably learned a few things from his dad, Rick, I'm sure, over the years. This is Erin Porter. She's 32 years old. She's a registered nurse with Western Health, working at Sir Thomas Roddick Hospital in Stephenville. So here's an inside out with a lot of rotation. So this is following the exact same path as Nick. And they're going to be lucky to get this to stay on the edge of that red one. That's a, that's a very tricky double. But it also leaves you red in the control zone, even if you stuff it, so. I wouldn't complain about having three red rocks in the top eight foot. Or just blow a few out. <laughs> Not the way I would choose to do it, but that's okay. I would love it if you just left it, like nose hit and leave your reds clustered there. Jackie Reed, 41 years old. She's working for the Department of Education and Lifelong Learning Terry. in Prince Edward Island. As a, she's a, the math and science curriculum leader for grades 7 and 12, as well as the coordinator for French second okay. language programs. That works. That cleared out some granite, but it is still Newfoundland Labrador sitting shot Barry. And now you can see where the teams are having to use a little bit of creativity. Drawing in there is not as not a viable option, especially with their choice of release. So he's already going to the six foot hit and roll to try to sit two. Trying to keep this on line. It's really close. We're sitting right behind the sheet. I would say, if anything, she was a fraction inside, and they still hit it too thick. Wow. Good sweeping there by Brooke, and it is leaving Newfoundland Labrador sitting a couple, but you see Dennis Watts lining things up. Yeah, a very unfortunate spot for that rock to have stopped. Any, any shorter makes the double very difficult any farther and you're happily sitting too completely buried. Jackie's a former Canadian mixed champion. She won in uh, 2010 with her husband Robert. Terry! Camel of course. I think we're switching to the hit and roll now. So here's where that last end practice of the two foot strong board hit and roll comes in. This is this is where you learn something last end in theory. In theory. In theory. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for people to remember eight rocks ago. Dude, I barely remember two rocks ago, man, so. <laughs> My job as a coach is to remember 14 or 20 or 30 rocks ago. Do you remember three weeks ago, fourth end? Remember that really good <laughs> shot or really bad shot four games ago against? <laughs> or better yet, you go out and you set it up on the practice sheet and say, try that again. And then try doing it a different way and see what, what you want. Here's Will Butler, 17 years old. Has the greatest job in this field as far as I'm concerned. He works at his aunt's ice cream shop, Golden G Dairy Bar in Stephenville. So he pushed that one out a little bit. Trying to get a little movement on it. Just ever so little bit at the end, inside out at it. Almost as if he doesn't 
want to believe where he has to put the ice, and that's a normal place to get to. If you if you get into a routine of this is what Rock should do, and then it does something different, it's sometimes hard to believe it. But they were actually better off to over curl, roll under, and kind of bounce into their own, than unfortunately leave it there. That's a, that's a if they if they make the double, okay, you get the side of the four foot for for the attempted steal, but. Not not a good spot when you have two other reds in the house. True, true, true. If red nose is this, yellow's got a big problem too. Dennis Watts, 39 years old. He's a IT systems analyst for the remote command center of Brookfield Global Integrated S Solutions. Also works on the family Christmas tree farm in the fall and winter. Terry. Oh, that was a that was an inside out delivery. A little wobble and a little, whoa, 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 whoa. little swing. Got anything? Well, flash. Well, kind of getting back to Butler's shot. On ice this straight, you just, if anything, have to err on B inside. You can always correct it with the sweeping. You know, as long as the rock is where it needs to be, the sweeping can hold it there. Well, and that always goes to the concept of missing the right way too, does it not? Correct. Yeah. But what I'm getting at this is, it's almost make sure your execution puts it on miss the right way because you have no capacity for your sweepers to really do a lot. Where you throw it's pretty much where it's going to go. I haven't seen them drag too many out, so it's going to be a tough sheet for them. So this is Will Butler throwing his last here in the second end, sitting two. Mm, quick shout out to Kai on sheet two. Just drew the top of the forefoot under a long guard. It's a all good way coaching, to set up right? an end. All coaching. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll take credit for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going for the tight guard here, except for it looks a little looks a little warm. But you know what? It's, as long as you're on the center line, you're going to be in a good spot to steal. Yep, line. Yep, line. Yep, line. That'll do. Yeah, that's, uh, there's not a lot of real good options for red here. This is, this is accept your mistakes and minimize the outcome. Hypothetically, you can get all three going and then you have a chance for two or three. It's, it's not a big chunk of that front one. If you get this one going across the face of this one and that one going over that way, it's possible, but... Looks like he's changing path, though. He'll go see if he can promote his own there. Just chisel it sideways. We get it a bit thicker, right? If you get a quarter to a third. Both of them are significantly likely to give up a steal, so which one is more likely to get rid of an opponent point? The kicker is he can't see a lot of that red one. He's going to get down to the hack, and he's going to say, okay, I can see two inches of that. That's all you need to hit. But when you throw the when you have to throw the rock exactly throw right, it's a, it's a bit of a daunting view inches. from the far end. No. It is Newfoundland Labrador sitting a couple. Same throw as last time, just better. You don't see at the back of the forefoot there is another Newfoundland Labrador stone there. That's just on the T line. That is the stone that Dennis will be trying to remove with this angle raise. More of a slash than anything. So the discipline on these is don't jump them early. This is looking good. Don't need much of it. Just like that. Nice shot. Super nice shot by Dennis Watts. They'll take a look and yes, they'll kick it off. It will be a single point for Prince Edward Island and it'll be a tie game when we come back for the third end right after this. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities, to freeze time and place and create long lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan, cold enough. Welcome back.
back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center as we head into the third end of this Atlantic Canada showdown between Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland Labrador. The teams have traded single points the first two ends and it will be Will Butler's team from the Rock that will have Hammer here in the third. Walking across the sheets just because I'm interested in all of those. Alberta and BC are tied at zero after two ends but they have a few rocks in play this one. Uh, Northern Ontario yep. and Northwest Territories are also tied at zero. And Nunavut and Yukon are tied at two. Bunch of, bunch of close to the chest games today. So just to uh, reiterate that, you can see all the scores all the time. Curling.ca slash scoreboard. That uh, game between Northern Ontario and, and the Northwest Territories also with some um, repercussions in terms of who advances to the championship pool. North on, Northern Ontario has already advanced the territories would move in with a win today in this game keeping in mind that the territories will play playing three draws today as a result of having to miss their first game uh, due to the travel concerns brought on by the weather here in prince albert and jamie cooey's northwest territories team tough loss earlier today to ontario and uh, that head-to-head -head result could come back to haunt them as well so we'll track all those scores as uh, the afternoon progresses here in Prince Albert and outline how things work. And just a reminder of the format, two 17 pools comprising Canada's, Curling Canada's 14 member association, seven in each pool. The top four from each pool will move on to the championship pool. And then the four teams from pool A will play the four teams from pool B over the next two days. Yep. And from there, the top four teams will go, go to the semifinals on Saturday. No tiebreakers. Uh, if there are tied uh, records, head-to-head yeah, -head head will be the first tiebreaker. And if that doesn't resolve it, such as in a three-way tie, then it will be the last shot draw distances that will break the tie. And we can tell you now that the Territories has scored a deuce in the second end to take a 2-0 lead on Northern Ontario. So Team Trevor Bonneau from Thunder Bay will have Hammer in the third. And in our game, two red guards up there for Prince Edward Island. And Newfoundland has one at the back of the house. So far this end has been actually an interesting example of a little bit we've talked about. Newfoundland's releases are running way straighter than Prince Edward Island. So PEI threw up a fairly long guard, believing they can draw around them that high. And Newfoundland has tried two attempts to go around them. And the back one was wide open before the new rock came on. And then that one there was making its way in. So there's so room eight. to make a draw in there. But right now, PEI, with their softer releases, has a decisive edge on draw curl. Line's good. Okay. So okay. imagine if this guard he's tapping up was only a okay. foot outside the house. Allison. That's what Allison. I was trying to say earlier on, is on super straight ice, guards just barely outside the house make your life so <laughs> much easier. Yep. Long is tempting because you can technically draw around it, but it's not the the easier route. So that spills out, so it is still Newfoundland Labrador with Sharp Rock at the back 12. So let's see if Nick has the ability to, to, to coax a little bit more curl out of his. It's kind of, you got that double guard to go through, which is nice if you get, foot, you know, three quarters buried. It's it's a couple of really nice hit and rolls if you don't get fully right. buried. Yep. Hard line. Really hard line. Drive. Mark and Aaron trying to keep this on line. Looks like it's through. But it's light. Like so. 16 and a half. That's just a little, a little shy. So, so intent on the curl. We forgot about the weight. That makes life harder for... PEI, believe it or not, because they have one at the back and not a lot of paths to get there. Now you got to be thinking two or three shots ahead. You can clean up or you can throw one, say, around here somewhere, which gives you a useful rock for later. That'd be a very useful rock. Set up shot for... Or get rid of that one. Not your choices, really. Whatever you like. Happy board. Tight. Or apparently or go through, go the, through hole. the hole, which still gets rid of that yellow one if you call it safely. There's some there's some options here that'll 
help Prince Edward Island for sure. From where we're sitting, that's a very skinny yep. little hole, but yes. the right miss is get rid of that outside yellow one. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's good. Three yeah. hits. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Thought we were going to have another scenario like Terry Miller's shot last <laughs> night for the, the Yukon when it was a little tick tick and made the shot, but not quite. I would call that not having missed on the pro side, so to speak. That's, you know, if that yellow one and red one weren't there, then at least the whole side's open. Now, if yellow comes up even light on this one, it even further caps off that side of the sheet. Podner will try and get another one in there. I add a few more feet to the throw this time than after coming up light with his throw last in his first shot. Now we've got another one that's kind of hanging on them. A little bit of, little bit of an overcorrection. See if they can get it at least partly buried. Pretty good finish there, surprisingly. Yeah, it came up at the end. Maybe the ice is softening up and being a little friendlier. Six feet lighter would have been an absolute dream shot. That, uh, that gives PEI a chance to take the whole end away. Mentioned Jackie Reed and her husband, Robert Campbell. He uh, did win two Canadian Mixed Championships, 21 years apart, which is the record for the longest gap between Canadian Championship victories in any dis curling discipline in Canada. A record Grant Odishaw could beat this week with a win this week. He uh, would be looking at wins 24 years apart if that happens. But Robert is going to be inducted into the PEI Sports Hall of Fame on November 25th. So our congratulations to Robert Campbell. It's nice to see our good friend Grant still, still playing and, and bringing a few younger bodies along with him on the ride. A very familiar face to a lot of us. So now here they're envisioning getting across the face of the red one. They're calling kind of a heavy drop. Not sure I believe it'll curl that far. You gotta try, bro. Gotta try. I'll tell you what. Not a bad effort. That was valiant. I think they got it far enough that if they hit it with any weight, the red one will come off the back two and roll out. So there is a potential for a multiple with that lineup. Just enough. Nice shot. Let's wait. This is starting to look like mixed doubles on a super straight sheet. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. Harris, no. Yep. Allison Waddell trying to get this. Yep, keep going. Into a good position. You got it, you got it, keep going. They're just by. Just by. Very nice sweep by Terry and Allison. My goodness, great that was shot. An excellent shot. Wow. All that action behind the T line, though, it's still a nice pocket. So he's picturing. Basically a double. Throw it right. Throw it right into there. Red and red would go like that. That's gonna take a little bit of weight. You're really gonna have to trust this throw. Again, hitting the guard, not a bad thing. This is looking really close. Really close. That's, that's probably about the best you were going to hope for in that spot. Watts will be content with continuing to just close the whole side off and make him earn more than one. Perfect freeze, you might be able to set up a steal, but you're perfectly happy just closing the side off. Dennis Watts, no stranger to wearing that PEI jacket. Done it a few times, so straight, starting at the 1999 Canada Winter Games 
skip PEI there. Also played so, yeah, 15 uh, two previous Everest Canadian Curling Club championships. Yep. And mentioned he and Terry will be making the trip over to Edmonton. Dennis actually is going straight there from here and we'll spend some time in Edmonton leading up to the championships. Terry will go back home to Prince Edward Island. Back four and sweeping. That can't be bad. Oh, he's getting tight to the guard. See how strong Terry is? Nice sweep. Nice sweep. Bump it if you can. Move it if you can. Well, that's a really good curling shot right there. That is making absolutely every inch out of that shot. No. This is turning out to be an interesting little path. You're getting more curl through those that that particular path than anywhere else in the sheet so far. We're probably almost up to three feet in that zone. And they're reading it really well too yes. in terms of the the line calls, knowing when to call the sweeping off, and yeah, it's just getting by guards. Like it's been a very well executed. Yeah. Say six shots through that path. I like this choice. So he's basically looking to use his yellow guard as best as possible. He could cut it across the one that Dennis just threw, and that would be a not bad outcome. Pick it out kind of thing. But even if you just open up the front and get rid of a bunch of the guards, then you're going to have choices on your last one because you're really over a barrel right at this moment. And there you see the guard that uh, Will Butler will take on. Just a little high side. I think right now he's picturing draw to the forefoot to get out of a lot of mess, but we'll see how this goes. So there were two values in that shot. Number one, you're now shot rock. Number two, you have a clear draw port into the forefoot if Dennis makes the exact same shot again. Because Dennis is going to have to throw the same shot now. You might have heard Will turn around and say to Terry Arsenault, sorry. But that was uh, one of the outcomes that was there on the table. So it didn't have to be too sorry. That was, uh, no. that was always a possibility. Stick it To was pick good. it clean pick like it that was, was terrific. It's a pretty small margin to get between the pick and the just stick it, which is also acceptable. So, like I said, I liked that call. I love the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Watts now. Can you do it again? Allison's drop now. Allison's drop right now. Huh? Terry doesn't have anything to do on this one. New pass. If you need it, Allison, only if you need it. It's really close. Weight's really good. Curling now. Much you can. Move it if you can. Four Move inches can. wider. Got to curl some though. Huh? No, there it is. Excellent yep. shot. Very good. Good judge, guys. Red sitting one. That's a good response after that shot by oh, uh, yeah. Will Butler. Just go back in and throw it again. So here's what I was kind of saying is that choice of the run back opened up the path. So now you can just draw your forefoot. That's what that's what the really good skips do. Give themselves a bailout if they can. Will Butler with his final shot of this third end. It is Prince Edward Island with shot rock. No way to uh, generate two here, so it's just trying to take a single. We'll see what his draw weight is like in a pressure circumstance. Put, the, put his feet to the fire and see what he's made of. We've all seen a lot of games won and lost on these draw to the four foots. Really close. Seems a hair light. He's through the port. 16-8. That'll be short. Hold the string a little bit and it will be a steal of one for Prince Edward Island. Newfoundland Labrador will have hammer when we come back for the fourth end right after this.
Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center as we head into the fourth end of our featured game here in draw 11, draw 10, pardon me. It is Prince Edward Island, Team Dennis Watts from Summerside taking on Team Newfoundland Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador from Summerside, from Stephenville, pardon me, and St. John's skip by Will Butler. Reminder, we'll bring up, uh, we'll be back on the air tonight, 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Our final game of the preliminary round robin, it will be Saskatchewan's team Sean Meacham and British Columbia's team Miles Craig, and a good possibility that will decide a spot, the final spot, into the championship pool. And I can tell you that uh, I'll be joined on the broadcast tonight by none other than Will Butler and Nick Codner. They will share color commentary duties tonight. Still to be determined who gets the first four ends, who gets the last four ends. I suppose they'll have a rock, paper, scissors to decide that, but it'll be interesting to hear the commentary from the two young, youngest players in the field here in Prince Albert. Well, this may not be the top teams in the standings, but thus far this game has been quite enjoyable and well executed, so I'm, I'm happy so far. There's another example of a half to long way guard that they're trying to make the most out of. But even after throwing it well, barely missing the guard, you still only get half buried. But, you know, make the most of what you got. The nice thing with the shot that yep. Yep. Yukon, or, uh, Newfoundland just played is it's high enough in the house that you can yep. make a lot of things yep. out of it. You yep. might have been a tight guard. Sure, it's unorthodox for the team with Hammer to play yep. the center guard, but it's that usable spot in the control okay. zone, as they would put it. So there's a great example of it. By being a little higher in the house on this straighter ice, these splits are actually not that hard to play either. The, the ice is so easy to read. Got a quasi-corner guard from Red. Brooke Godsland, she's 25. She's the assistant general manager for a Good Life Fitness Club in St. John's. But a fun fact for her, she's got a hockey championship ring. She won a Kelly Cup ECHL championship in 2019 with the Newfoundland Growlers. She was the retail operations manager and organized off-ice events for the Toronto Maple Leafs when they had their training camp there in 2019. But always fun to have a championship ring from another sport. A rare overcurled shot there. Weight was fairly nice, but definitely got uh, almost a whole rock more curl than expected. Didn't see the release, so we'll see what happens. Yep. 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 For yep. those with a, with a keen ear, kind of All a fun way. difference All between way. the uh, two teams. The more senior staff of the PEI team are calling control board normal. And the uh, younger, more Newfoundland team calls a lot of 10, 11, 9. The shift in curling. I like it. You can get there. It's really hard to get Same thing, here. just different just words. Curling language means different things to different people. For sure. <laughs> well, even in Atlantic Canada, they don't refer to thirds or Yep. By skips, they're the mates. Sure. Mine's really good. I think you can go ahead. Close, Brooke. Oh. Uh, Brooke. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Ontario, they right, say vice skip. That is not right, a Brooke. common term in Western Canada. I'm making it a common term. Really I think that's an important term. Moving to Ontario was the first time I had ever heard of vice. Not a bad choice again. That did move, that one. I really like their choice of going around the outside of that guard. You see a lot Deal. of people yeah. Just hot, try to cross center yeah. line with that draw to get underneath everything. But the danger is you leave it a little bit short and now you've given the other team the center guard they wanted. By going around the outside, you're much safer with a little bit light because then, hey, I got a corner guard out of it. I like that. It's uh, something you spend a lot of time teaching people. Catch one. It okay. will catch one. Good throw there by Terry Arsenal. Good throw, Terry. See if they play the junior deuce or try to get a little creativity somewhere. That would be the junior deuce. I hope so. 
Now, some people might not know that expression. I haven't, I haven't dropped it on the air this week, but... Junior Do you want to take it on? Okay. Spread the rocks as far apart as you can so that there isn't an obvious double and just basically trade shots to score two. And no guards. Yep. You basically keeping two rocks in the house the whole end and crossing your fingers. Yep. The one thing I will say is the advantage actually goes to the team without hammer because any kind of a hit succeeds. Hit and stay, hit and roll out, doesn't matter. You've cut a point out. If you hit and stay, they hit you back. If you hit and roll out, they draw it back. So the actual advantage is to the team without hammer because half shots are acceptable. Because, you know, it's not usually a nice place to roll or anything like that. The pressure is slightly more on the team with hammer because they have to keep the rock in play. One roll out. You have to make fours every time. Yep. Four out of four on your uh, And on certainly your threes. <laughs> yep. And you don't want to group them together because then doubles come into play. Here's a chance. Yep. For Prince Edward Island, Jackie yep. Reed, not necessarily playing for the double, but certainly yep. wanting to roll it closer to that other yep. Newfoundland yep. Labrador yep. stone. Yes, 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 yes. Roll over, Terry. Or Ooh, nice shot. Had a girl. Or, a or make the double. double right? <laughs> very nice, very nice indeed. As I was saying, watching her in the first game. She's relaxed more in this one, from what I can tell, and her execution has been significantly improved. Full kudos to that one. That was a great shot by Jackie Reed. And you know, the beauty of that, like I say, let's say you had rolled underneath of it, you still managed to get rid of a yellow. You didn't, you didn't look at it as a loss or a mistake. Like a Ted. Clean Clean brush. Clean Clean brush. Brush. Good. Yep. 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 Good. yep. Yes, hard. Yep, hard brush. Hard. Hard. Oh, keep hard contact hard. here. Very nice sweeping. For Godsland keeps that. I wouldn't have been against rolling it even farther across because you'd have been super deep under the T line, and then they hit something, then they would be backing to try to create a two off of. So I actually might have been inclined to take that farther over. And even bring it closer to that potential Place. catcher that's on the uh, yep. outside of the rings there Make too. a little, little pocket under the kind of corner guard. Yep. Clean, clean, clean. I have been actually quite impressed with the motion of the rocks the last couple of ends. This is, uh, yeah, there you go, that's your, your thought of getting it towards that catcher. Not sure what his reluctance to go over there, I guess, avoid any potential steal. simple executed and thrown hit. I will say Newfoundland for a fairly small Atlantic province has uh, certainly got some future in curling ahead of them. They've uh, punched above their weight certainly uh, at the youth level in recent years. Just Mostly on the boys side to be uh, accurate but the girls have uh, made a lot of movement in recent years as well but some great young men's players coming up in the system. We'll see Joel Kratz out of Newfoundland Labrador playing with uh, Team Owen Purcell at the Winter Universiad later this season in Lake Placid. Will and Nick are teammates on a up and coming U18 team and of course we saw Nathan Young suiting up with Team Gushu at the Pan Continental Championships last week. Also a great young player and Greg Smith, can't forget about him. He's uh, got a very well established men's team that uh, is always competitive on the national scene in Newfoundland, Labrador. Good things happening and continues to be the Brad Guju effect out there as he inspires so many young curlers, not only in his home province, but across the country. It would have been so easy for them to say, why bother, we're always gonna run into him, but it's nice to see these young kids coming up and saying, we're gonna make it work for it. So let's see which way, which way he decides to roll this one. No. Little inside out. Close. Gonna be uh, hard good. pressed to keep Close. this one. Just gotta pick Close up the curl. Oh, there it goes. No, it's broke. It's not Nick. It's broke. There it goes. Yeah, it's broke. Great. 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 
not. They're throwing such excellent weight. Like there, there's very little risk when you're throwing that kind of weight because you lose 60-ish percent of it on the hit. And rolling out's not likely going to happen. Well, if I'm going to speculate, I'd say that's one of the biggest kind of evolutions in junior curling is that willingness to throw the down weight. It used to be you just want to throw it hard and let's see what happens. But uh, there's a lot more, a, a lot more willingness particularly in the coaching community, to, to get those kids throwing a lot more control weight that you can do something with. I would say there's it, it's still a hurdle <laughs> to convince them in the value of it. There's no denying that an up weight appears easier to call. It runs straight. You put the broom down, you throw it, and that's where it goes. It takes some of the variables out of it, but it also takes out some of the good variables, such as sweepers. So I would still say that with young curlers, it's a bit of work to convince them not to throw hard, but once they learn that value, they certainly appreciate it. And they'll need it. They'll need that in their bag as they move up the uh, up the ranks into men's and women's play, and even at the uh, that next-gen level that uh, Curling Canada is working so hard to keep going, the U23, we've got a U25 event, particularly the university levels. You, you need that subtlety yeah. in your game. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you watch a lot of people on TV that are now playing less weights and you have people like Russ who are speaking to the value of hey, throwing uh, the right Brooke. weight and it's all Brooke. adding up to the right thing. Wait, good. Got an, another blank Ooh. attempt on the run here. A similar spot to where he knows hit earlier in the game. Well, he apparently learned from his first he one. Certainly did. So it is a blank and Newfoundland Labrador We'll have Hammer in the fifth end. The teams will take their fourth end break. We will too. We'll be back in a few moments here at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities. To freeze time and place and create long-lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Sure, it can be a bit uncomfortable at times. You're gonna have to do some shoveling, scrape some ice off your windshield, and you're definitely gonna need to wear a toque, but that's all part of the fun. It's about dressing right and preparing for the adventure. So bundle up and embrace the season. Saskatchewan, cold enough. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities, to freeze time and place and create long lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan, cold enough.
Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center as we head into the second half of this game. Our featured game this afternoon at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship. It is Prince Edward Island taking on Newfoundland Labrador. Prince Edward Island with a 2-1 lead, but it will be the team from The Rock with the hammer in the fifth end. I'm Al Cameron, joined on our broadcast today by Gord Coppathorn, and Gord will put you in the position of coach, which is not an unfamiliar circumstance for you and ask you what you might have told these two teams at the fourth end break if you were working with them. Let's start with the team that is throwing right now, Team Prince of Rhode Island. If I was PEI's coach, I would say take advantage of the fact that your rocks are curling a little harder. So I would say tighten your guards up to the house and try to pull one in underneath of it or at worst goad them into trying to go behind it because they're not going to get the same amount of motion. If I'm Newfoundland, I'm going to say the opposite, and I'm going to say get out of the middle. I'm going to say go to the outsides, wait for them to hang a draw, and then your hit and roll is going under your corner guard. So we'll see how these teams, uh, if they were listening, how they might have taken advantage of that knowledge. We'll see how that plays out. Four games on the ice this afternoon as we close out the preliminary round. One more draw to go before the teams are set for the championship pool in the seeding pool tomorrow. And we'll just run down those stores real quickly. Newfoundland, or pardon me, none of it, and Yukon, both those teams headed to the seeding pool. Yukon coming after off a great win earlier today over Quebec, but they are down 4-3 in the fifth end. That is Terry Miller's team from Whitehorse with Hammer in the fifth, but uh, none of it. Team Peter Mackey from Iqaluit with a 4-3 lead. Deuces in the second and fourth ends. Two big games that have a lot of, that will have a lot to do with determining who goes on to the championship pool. Northern Ontario taking on the Northwest Territories. Northwest Territories skipped by Jamie Cooey and that team from Yellowknife. They take one in the fourth end for a 3-2 lead. And Northern Ontario team Trevor Bonneau from Thunder Bay will have Hammer in the fifth. And another tight game, BC and Alberta, both those teams really scrapping hard to see who can move on into that championship pool. It is a 1-1 tie, lots of rocks in play in that game, but only two points put on the board, one by either team. Alberta taking one in the fourth end, so it is British Columbia team Miles Craig with last rock in the fifth against team Morgan Muse, the only female skip in this 14-team field, that team playing out of Calgary and Cochrane. And in our game, 2-1 lead, for Prince Edward Island. My bad, bro. Really good throw. I was gonna say, he did say yeah. There's a nice skip for you. My nice bad. Throw. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this, this end started off with the exact opposite of what I would have advised. We had a long red guard and then yellow tried to go around it. <laughs> Close. Line's good. Maybe a little yep. Up. First one to get one whoa, fully buried whoa. under that guard is gonna have a, a big advantage. Yep. Whoa, 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 Freeze has become a much more comfortable shot in most players' repertoires with the advent of mixed doubles. Here's Nick Codner. He will attempt that freeze behind the center guard. Okay, room now. Line's good. Line's good. Let's do it. It's curling. That's good. Close. Looking really good. It's looking really good. Hard line. Brooke and Aaron trying to get that as tight as possible. Pretty good shot. Good effort there from Nick Codner. Now here's the slight danger with them playing down the middle, which they're quite willingly doing. It gets busy really fast, and then you don't have a lot of room to get out of jail. They throw this... Uh, call it a tight, maybe just into the top of the house guard, and then yellow's going to be... Having to move a few rocks to hopefully get a chance to score one. Yep. 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 Keep it going. Keep it going. Yep. Keep it going. Lots of lines. First again. First again. Okay. Lots of lines. Three quarters. So now we're going to see some some rocks moving. 
That red one was just a hair long. If it was a foot farther down, this double peel is significantly harder to get them both and the shooter out. But with them that close together, all three could leave. Never. It's gonna be thin. I think one red stays. The upside is, is you can actually see the outside of the the deep red one now. <laughs> Not a very big piece, but you can. That obviously is on Dennis Watts' mind as he's going to call a guard to see if he can cover up that little thin piece that's exposed. Even half freeze the yellow one isn't the end of the world. Foot short on the house would be perfect. got the lefty playing here, so she'll actually get a little bit more curl out of this, being her in turn, as the old language would say. But that's the thing to keep in mind, is that each player will have a turn that curls a little bit more, and it's usually your in turn. So that's, in principle, an advantage to her right now, because that's the path you want, a little bit of extra curl. Terry, yep. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Looks like she was wide of her target and a little bit heavy. Will Butler trying to take that as deep as possible. Okay. Hang on at the back, so it still is PEI sitting it's shot and Newfoundland Labrador sitting second shot. And they will take on the peel, Aaron Porter. Wisely recognizing that things are not looking good for them, so continuing to play in the house is not a great plan. They're basically switching to how do we score a point or blank. Yep. See how Aaron's peel ability is. Sounds pretty good. That'll get the job done. Nicely gone and out of the way. And now PEI will have to play the cat and mouse game of guard peel, guard peel, guard peel. Interesting that he switched turns on her for effectively the same shot. How's weight? Perhaps her out turn is her favored turn. Allison's rock. Allison in. Got to curl it. Trying to get a little bit of curl out of it. It's got to get fully onto the center line. Coming in, Allison. Oh, he's cold again. It's his turn. <laughs> More sweeping from Dennis Watson we've seen all week. Do you like trying to get to it? Just a hair shy. You needed you needed at least a third of the rock across the center line. Okay. Gotta get close to So a little bit of an opening in the door for Newfoundland Labrador to see if they can generate a deuce, but they'll need a make here. Choice of weight is huge here. Because if you pick a softer one, even if you don't make the raise, your yellows are gonna stay in the house. If you get too aggressive with your weight, you can actually pick your own out if there's no value whatsoever. Needs to curl. It's looking close. Right, Nick, making a move. Go. Go, go, go. go. Just roll it up. I can't decide if that was good or not. I'm going to call that good. You have that yellow-red kind of slashable shot, which you'd only need to catch an inch of it. Hard, but doable. Again, you'll have to move that red one a few feet. That yellow straight back is a two-foot run back. So your guard is going to have to be fairly long in order to block it. Red has nothing they can really hit. So, sure, red still shot, but I would say yellow feels a lot more... Comfortable in their a little more potential score. here more, still. <laughs> they'll sc score two or three, yeah, absolutely. Now the pressure's on Dennis Watts to make a good guard here. Now this is where you just don't want to get too cute because basically speaking, you're trying to guard anywhere 
on this side of that one, right? Like if you're here, there's another guard down the middle. If you get too cute and your guard over curls over here, well now you're giving options that you shouldn't have to. So too often people will under undercut their ice on this because a guard will, you know, bite a little bit right at the end and then you you show a bit too much. But you can cover half that yellow and be fine. In theory, straighter ice is easier to throw guards on though. That's the principle. They'll go a little bit farther than you're usually expecting to because they're not going to have the hard swing. Line's good. We were both in Canmore watching the 2021 Canadian Mixed, and that was tough ice to throw guards on just because of the huge amount of late finish. Yep. It's another example of where bailing out with a guard can Cross actually now, be Terry. very difficult. Terry. Is he queuing it up? It's safe, I think. That might have just finished enough at the end. I, and I don't think you can get to the inside to create any kind of a... What? There's a good look at it. You gotta cross it a I will bit. say this though, the red straight back is not a bad shot. Almost automatic. If you it. take this rock, whoop, we change cameras this direction and hit this red one in any way whatsoever, good things are happening. If you get across this one, then it blasts that way. Like at the end of the day, you're getting rid of the guard, which is your nemesis rock right now. So I, I, that'd be my inclination is straight back with that red one. Worst case scenario, you peel it off and you're still not looking bad. And they got to make it again. The downside being they could play a very nice hit and roll on your yellow one, which is dangerous. Looks like he'll take on the red that was just thrown. Pick it out perhaps. Well, that ice suggests he's going to try to cross the face with softer weight, I suppose. That's a hard shot. Edge on edge. If he was a lefty, he'd be a little bit happier. <laughs> Throwing from the opposite side of the hack, that would be for sure. Will Butler, by the way, very talented figure skater as well. He skates for the Silver Blades Skating Club in Corner Brook. He's a five-time provincial figure skating champion. So yeah, we're looking at just board. Yes, Brooke, you gotta go. And we're very close to the guard. We are on the guard. Well, you mentioned same principle. Uh, you remove the guard, so that's the, the right miss. The danger is if red hits just yeah, oh yeah, on the inside of that yellow one. Freeze it or bump it. Like picture, picture back. Nah, you don't want to set up a double either. But anyways, if you get on the inside of that yellow one just a little bit, it's going to be real hard pressed for them to score. I'd be inclined to get rid of that red one. Or sorry, that yellow one. So kind of the same weight that Butler just, just threw, we get just across, just just inside the nose a little bit. Then he has a double to try to make. If he makes it, he gets one. If he misses it, you steal one. I'd be pretty happy with that. So basically, rock right there, yellow one out the back. That's a high pressure yep. shot for Butler. Really close. Allison. Close. Stay close. Really close. Stay close, Terry. It's got about two inches of air, which is a little more than he wants, but close, close, close. Moving pretty good. There it goes. Excellent. Excellent shot. Yep. So it's just a fraction buried. So yeah, I don't think the double's there. Well, you could do it's it there, but you'd have to throw a really, really good curling shot. Yes, and that was the whole point of this, was to make this as hard as possible. So you're going to have to do this probably about control, because you got to just miss the front red one to not stick that red, because your yellow one's going to hang out up here somewhere. So this red one has to go down and all the way out to at least here in order for you to score. So that's a... Uh, it's a touchy shot. It is there for two if he does it just perfectly. Can we get two, can we get two here? Yeah. Here you heard Will saying that two is in play. 
Yeah, pay for the front red one with control weight and you're pretty good. The reason I say control is you also don't want A, your shooter to roll too far and B, normally you don't know what it's going to do. You haven't thrown it here, so don't. Will Butler, final shot Nine in this half. fifth no. end. No. Close. So Nick Close. called nine and a half out of his hand, which I would say is a little stronger than Broke. they were Broke. after. Broke. 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 And it's running a little bit straighter than they were after. Okay. And it will be a steal of one for Prince Edward Island. And the Islanders will take a 3-1 lead into the sixth end when we come back right after this. Center, we head into the sixth end of today's featured game between Prince Edward Island, Team Dennis Watts from Summerside, and Team Newfoundland and Labrador, skipped by Will Butler representing the Stephenville, representing Stephenville and St. John's. And it is Prince Edward Island in a 3-1 lead after stealing one in that fifth end. Both these teams will be in the seeding pool, which begins tomorrow morning. Newfoundland Labrador looking for its first win. Prince Edward Island with a one and four record. So Terry has decided, you know what? I have enough of a cushion. I'm gonna throw this one in and make them work to earn. The only thing is it does then convince Butler to throw the corner guard, which they haven't been doing thus far. And I still think that's what's gonna create danger for, for PEI. We'll see how this turns out. I think they were doing so good with those guards that I might have done it again just because Newfoundland was chasing them around it to their own detriment. Just hoping that stops short, it will slide in, so it is hittable for Prince Edward Island. Perhaps a path that was a little fresher. It's been Five ends of rocks going back and forth, inside out. Hasn't been played much, so perhaps just a little bit keener. Allison Waddell. Leeds haven't thrown an awful lot of hits in this Quaid. event, so I'm sure she's looking forward to okay. upping the weight a little bit. Quaid. Quaid. Critical draw on sheet two. BC playing against two, and he's not looking happy yeah, with it. That was a... Uh, Unforced error on our sheet as well. Just floated there, just didn't, uh, didn't click. But the middle's first. open. So it looks like a steal of two for Alberta. Close game over there. Continue with trying to make a corner guard. Butler is feeling good with no rocks down the middle. We will see Team BC in our feature game tonight. That will be at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern here on Curling Canada's YouTube channel. It will be BC's team, Miles Craig, from Victoria and Duncan, taking on the home team, Team Saskatchewan, from Swift Current, Team Sean Meacham. That will be at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain. We'll be joined tonight on the broadcast by Will Butler and Nick Codner from Team Newfoundland Labrador. And it is a steal of two, by the way, for Alberta to take a 3-1 lead over BC. And that will add even more importance to that game tonight between BC and Saskatchewan. So if you explained it correctly, Alberta needs to win this one, and BC needs to win either this one or Saskatchewan. And then something like that. <laughs> Saskatchewan is at three and two, BC and is at two and two, Alberta's at two and three. So an Alberta win combined with a BC win tonight would leave the three teams at three and three records. 
they would be one and one against each other. So the last shot draw distance would decide who it goes on, which of those two teams would go on, and which one is dropped into the seeding pool. It's actually a new piece of my coaching repertoire is taking time to practice and impart the necessity of last stone draw because every year it seems to become more and more valuable. And you just, it, you can win events just by being able to throw your first draw in the forefoot. And you can be knocked out of the playoffs as we saw with team Jennifer Jones at the Winter Olympics last February. Yeah. Draw shot challenge was uh, what decided their team not moving on to the final four in Beijing. Tough way to be eliminated. Nice little shot there from Newfoundland to set up some potential. Everything's out of the forefoot, so they're still trying to generate a second one. Nice spot for it, even a tight guard is not too terribly dangerous to them. Top 12. Where? Top 12. Okay. We do yep. know that Daddy, Team Quebec, Daddy, skipped by Daddy, Felix Asselin, and Team New yep. Brunswick, skipped by Grant Odishaw, have advanced to the championship pool from Pool A. And Pool B, Nova Scotia okay. Team Paul Fleming and Northern Ontario Team Trevor Bonneau both at 4 and 1. All of those teams, as a matter of fact, at 4 and 1. But uh, Nova Scotia and Northern Ontario had advanced out of Pool D. Pool B, pardon me. And back to Pool A, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, and Alberta all have a chance. And it depends on those scenarios we discussed a few moments ago. And in Pool B, Northwest Territories, Ontario, Team Scott McDonald, and Manitoba, Team Corey Chambers also alive. Oh, okay. Interesting conversation going here. They're trying to decide how they can get their yellow one into play. And the only way is to go off in this direction. The inside doesn't curl into the house. If you cross the nose, it'll stay short. Hard, hard, so that's hard. what they were, they were debating. Hard. Uh, down a little bit with weight and a little narrow on the broom. Well, they got the roll on, but didn't get the double. So it was kind of one or the other. And unfortunately, the double was the more valuable contribution to that shot. Anything on nose to outside half of the rock, and you were going to really be at, that, so just hit roll at least the it. shot red gone and two of your yellows on the house. Unforced error there. But still not looking bad. Terry is just looking to eliminate yellows. If they give up two, they're not going to be too horribly concerned. So just get rid of yellows. Jackie Reed, the vice skip for Prince Edward Island, will take that on. Allison, Allison. She's a little bit wide and then it's floating out there. Seeing if they can slash it in. And, uh, ah. They were just trying not to take their own out at that point. Yeah. Unfortunately. So here's an opportunity for Newfoundland Labrador. Looking for their first deuce, trailing by a pair here in this sixth end. It's a good chance to sit two, and then Newfoundland will be comfortable, and PEI will just be looking to trade rocks, thinking giving up two is acceptable. It's kind of where they're at at this moment, and play for a miss. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. This one's starting yeah, to curl. Yeah. Yes. Hard. Hard. Oh, 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 just got by. Really good shot, Aaron. I don't think that was the weight he was expecting her to throw. That red one is now out counting the yellow one as well. So I think more than anything, that was probably just a half second to a second lighter than he was expecting. Potential for a double here. Jackie Reed. Close. The spot's got a little bit of curl to it. Allison. Allison. They'll try and get a little more curl here. Allison being got, called upon got, to got, got, bring it across a little. Very nice throw. Good. Well, the eye will minded. sit three. They wouldn't have been against nosing it either and staying in that control spot. There's a lot of house and a guard that Newfoundland can work with. So had they stuck that and left the red, they'd have been okay with that. 
But here's that scenario you were talking about. The hit and roll is available, but they might even just take the... So that's exactly what I was no saying in the fourth there. end, quote unquote, coaching okay, break. No, four, four, Get the rocks four, off the center and wait for a nice roll under the corner guard. Their corner guard's a little tight to the center, but I'd still call it acceptable. I like this call. Hit and roll over. I just, I can't hear anything. We're just debating. No, I don't like We're just talking. Hey. I don't hate the hit. The hit's fine. This? Sure. I don't hate. I love it when people talk in that conversation. There's, that's one of the greatest curling vernaculars you'll find. I don't hate. I don't love it. Can I don't I despise it. And yet yeah. nobody takes that as a negative comment. I know. That's, that's <laughs> the a, that's old curling double of. negative, which is the nicest thing you can say. <laughs> that is my way of partially committing to this show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shade big. No, in all fairness, if you were having three, three and a half feet of curl, you'd have called that draw in your all day. Yep. But without trusting the curl and that spot, the hit and roll was also fine. But holding the shooter was a priority. And Absolutely. So now this is getting back to even what we were saying before. PEI has the advantage of a little bit more curl in their rocks, so why not take advantage of it here? Okay. And dealing yep. from a position yep. of strength, sitting too here as well. So absolutely, lots of reward, not a ton of risk. Everybody would love on the PEI world to be just kind of right, right there, three quarters to Ten. half to three quarters buried, biting the top of the forefoot. Still 15 for draw. If they chase you, they're going to roll away. You're going to like that. Just don't clip the guard. It's really the only thing here. Even deep isn't the end of the world. You throw it, they freeze to you, you freeze to them, you've cut them out to a one. No ad. Keep an eye on it during that pass. Allison's rock. Allison's rock. Just not curling like they're hoping. Clean. Go if you need to. Yep, keep it going. Curling hard now. Yep, keep it going. Edge on edge is kind of the minimum. So that's where they've gotten. Thanks. It's going to be hard to roll under. Going to try, though. You got to try. Even if you roll yep. to the outside eight foot, at least then the house is fairly open and you can pick your draw or your hit. Just stay somewhere eight foot or less. So they said 11-5, which to a lot of other people is basically board, strong board. All right, let's make it in. Depending on what uh, part of the world and what vernacular you, you <laughs> use to prefer. Like this yellow. Even if we just one. I will take a moment to speak to, I like when they say and a half, 11 and a half or whatever. Because if you're a little bit light and you're 11 something, if you're a little bit heavy and you're an 11, you're still saying the word 11 and the skip knows it's in the range. Right. Let's say you are shooting for an 11 and you're a little bit off, you're saying 10 something, and you don't hear the dot, it's tough. Right. right. You could be at 10 2, and that's way too much, but you only hear the 10, you don't know. So I love and a half. So this is going to roll a little bit away, which is what we put in the acceptable list. I probably would have admitted not rolling under and tried to get more away from the center line if I were them to make the hit and roll back harder. But even a nice hit and roll here is just going to be, you know, full eight foot, maybe nibbling the four. And that's not a, not a bad draw to have to make. Those is probably pretty good here. Changes the draw path too. For Except for you could just hit it back. That's kind of the 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 situation here is if you're not at least yeah. partially under the yellow guard, the hit back is still a score. Yeah, you're right. He'll play the hit. I don't think he'll take the chance on the draw for last rock. When you've thrown 85% of your rocks as hits, you'd be yeah. pretty happy with a yeah. nose hit for the point. Dennis Watts, last shot here in this sixth end. Prince Edward Island enjoying a 3-1 lead. On the I would say from Prince Edward Island. I would right. suggest this is Ball a little heavier Jerry. than he was intending to throw. Perfectly 
fine, got rid of the rock. You're not going to give up more than one, but I think he just got a little excited and gave it, you know, a half second more weight than he was after. Gord, the triple's there all day. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's get out our ruler. Does that look like a 95 or 90 degree angle? Absolutely. I'll tell you what. If this were the eighth end, we know what he'd be trying. But yeah, run this one across the top of that. Have your shooter come down and catch on that, and you get your two. But he will hit for try to hit for his single. He will whip Will Butler, the Newfoundland Labrador skip. Yeah, I think you're quite happy with just taking one here. Well, happy is not the right word to use, I suppose, but content. 11, 11 and a half. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Nick, Nick, no. Close, Nick. Close. Close. Got to be on the nose. It's nice, controlled weight. Yeah. You know. Okay, good. Strong board. You can, you can make that one work. Nice shot. So it will be a single point for Newfoundland Labrador. They'll cut the lead down to 3-2, but it will be Prince Edward Island with Last Rock when we come back for the seventh end right after this. Saskatchewan is cold. <laughs> it's like so cold that you'll on. often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities, to freeze time and place and create long-lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan, cold enough. into the seventh end of our featured game this afternoon. Draw 10 action at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship here at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. Prince Edward Island will have Hammer here in the seventh and a 3-2 lead after they force Newfoundland Labrador to a single point in the sixth. And that center guard is up for Newfoundland Labrador as they try and generate a steal. If I'm Newfoundland's coach, I'm sitting here saying, hey, good job getting some control back, scoring in the sixth end, you're only down one, there's all kinds of nice angles. I sure would have loved to have seen that guard about two inches off the top of the house. Because now the team with the more aggressive curl is just going to go around it. And, you know, hey, to be frank, PEI is Wait fine only. if they yep. score one. Yep. They just don't want to give up a steal. Okay, if that we're yellow we're guard was two, three okay, inches no, off the top of the house, it's way stop more stop awkward for PEI. Yep, 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 yep. I get yep. the long guard, they think they can curl around it, but sweep. it was just an open door for Newfoundland. Or sorry, PEI. And we'll get a good sense to see if uh, Newfoundland can find some curl. Brooke Godland will take on the counterclockwise rotation draw. You know, if we're on an arena, then the way this is set up is actually great for Newfoundland. But this just this isn't five foot arena ice, and you know, it's not a it's not a knock on the ice makers or the facility. But that's where starting with the tight guard is probably going to give you so much more of an edge. Valiant effort. Really fact, good. Way, way, really way good shot. Than I was expecting. Yeah. But now you're going to. You, you have the potential buildup of all these little hit and roll aways. Next thing you know, you're yeah. looking at three or four reds. <laughs> like, I don't think she could have thrown that much better, and it's half buried. Should explain, by the way, that the no tick rule is not being used here at the Canadian Jackie. Mixed Championship. That rock, that uh, first guard that Newfoundland Labrador was on the, touching the center line and under World Curling Federation rules and well as Curling Canada rules for the Briar and the Scotties, that rock wasn't tickable, but uh, it is tickable here at this event. So. We've seen that a few times, that the tick is being used on rocks touching the center line, and it is allowed here at the 2022 Canadian Mixed. Newfoundland's taking on the hit and roll. They are shot rock, though, and this one's a little low, so the hit and roll will be under the button, but that's 
probably fine for them if they freeze. You cap it off and give up one. That's okay. Aaron Porter trying to keep this online. Looking tasty. See where the roll goes. Good, Nick. Just like that. They're, they're dead even. Yeah. Yeah, flat enough, you can get both yellows you like moving. Normal, you like peel. I like that too. I wouldn't be throwing Brad peel. Rock. I have no idea what it's going to do out here. If it over curls and clips that front guard, c'est la vie. Terry Arsenault, play the hit. Normal. Well, close. Well, 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 Allison. Allison. It's also looking pretty good. Okay. Well, Newfoundland's yeah, sitting yeah. shot, but not feeling real comfortable at the moment. More rocks in play. More rocks in play. I'm throwing a couple of these here. Just get a piece underneath that red in the top 12. Would be ideal if you can get it to go that far. Here's Nick Codner. That was a lot. Yeah, back four. Good side here. It's curling. Hard. 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 Back four. Hard. Hard. Key lines. Hard. Are they going to get a five? Yeah, it's back. Ooh, I'll hold my tongue on that one. Your own. That caught them by surprise. That was very peculiar, especially with the way he threw it. Like his release seemed a bit unique, so maybe he just got the front turning a little bit to catch the curl earlier than expected. It didn't seem like his normal release, is what I would say. So we try it this way. Not surprised that it was not what they were expecting. Either, but do last. Do that with half weight. So if I'm PEI, I'm not inclined to get too into the drawing war. They're going to have a chat, Terry and Dennis. Just thinking half weight, is it chip the guard's fine, chip the red into that yellow's fine. I'm a bit Pick surprised they're yellow. not looking at that long guard. Touch, touch one of the three rocks. Yep, There's five rocks yep, in just, play, just so they can appeal it. Yep. I'm not sure why they are. That'd be my Terry. most comfortable. You have a hammer. This is, this you have a rock hammer. in a good spot. You have a rock in the control zone. I think I would just get rid of that long yellow guard and say, you figure out how to force me. That said, if he, judging with the ice, he's playing enough weight to get the yellow off the can. If he hits the guard, he hits the guard. Close. Oh. Arsenal. Yep. Yep. So the reason I'm not a huge fan yep. of this is that outside yellow one is a saver yep. for whoa, whoa. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. This might move. Yep, Jackie. Oh, Ooh. by one, but it won't get by the second, but. Good. Well, that solves the problem I was just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that long guard there. That's, that's going to be hurting. Hurting Watts all in long. Quick update on the other scores on the ice. Yukon took three in the fifth, stole one in the sixth. They are now up 7-4 on Team None of It. Northwest Territories, a big three in the sixth end. And they take a 6-4 lead over Northern Ontario. No, playing the seventh end, Northern Ontario with Hammer is the Jimmy Cooey's Territories team tries to bounce back from a disappointing loss this morning to Ontario. And it is Alberta leading 3-2 over British Columbia. Alberta with hammer in the seventh end. BC made a heck of a shot on their last one against a potential steal. They were forced one, but it was a nice shot. So Newfoundland's happy just to cluster the forefoot. Again, very mixed doubles Hard looking right now. Get, get yellows in the forefoot and make red gear look good. Take advantage of that long guard while you have it. Just a guard. Just a guard. Just a guard. Just a guard. Does protect shot rock, but there's still some options here for 
Prince Edward Island. This is one of those situations where your guard can very quickly become their guard. That was a, that was a in the house <laughs> would be yeah. beautiful kind Three of shot. Quarter. Two thirds. You didn't have a lot of room for error. If you're heavy, you weren't real great. If you're light, you weren't real great. So it was a tough shot. Now, if, if, uh, if PEI sticks this one, then it's going to be basically two yellow guards guarding PEI's rocks. say that's the first one watching Reed throw where she looked stiffer through the shoulders again. As she was sliding I was thinking to myself that there's a high likelihood that this is going to curl early and it did over curl on it. Still a pretty good scenario there. I'm not going to complain yeah, if I'm yeah. yeah. Even a steel yeah. one against is not okay, detrimental. You have hammer coming home. Five. Not what you'd prefer, but it's okay. And all those analytics folks will uh, will tell you that's a good thing. So Newfoundland's taking on a double, I suppose. Hard not to lose yours off the can, but you will be sitting in a lot of strength in the control zone. Well, kick. Whoa. Yep. Yep. 12. That means they're playing board yeah. weight. Yeah. So just oh. pushing the red one through. Gotta go. Keep pushing. Go, 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 go. You're so fast. Go. Hard. You gotta get that one going, Will. Yeah. Good, that was a very creative oh. shot. I quite like yeah. that. You now have three guards oh. over top of your one on the can. A little bit of risk with the red so tight in front of yours, basically frozen. But it's looking good again. That was a nice shot. I like that. Peel. And now here's that peel that you were looking for earlier in the end. Yeah. I won't lie, if I was coaching the junior team, I would have burned a timeout there. <laughs> Pounding on the window. <laughs> timeout! <laughs> oh, this is a nice double peel. Oh, just missed. Oh, a oh, little bit of bonus. Oh, that's interesting. That changes the complexion in a real hurry, doesn't it? Not in a good way for them, though. They've now made a giant, giant pocket. Yeah. We'll see how that played out. Lots of uh, angles. Yeah, that's not a great outcome no. for Prince Edward Island. No, that is not happy. I, yeah, where where they're tapping is absolutely brilliant. Any kind of a yellow there. It could be frozen to the red. It could be a foot or two short of the red. Anything in that spot there. And they're setting up a potential steal of two. If you get inside frozen on that red one, out counting it, and then play a chip on the outside red one on your last, you're now sitting two, and there's not much Watts is going to be able to do. So I see freeze, peel, jiggle, hit. That's my that's my prediction. <laughs> that's a lot of verbs. <laughs> Trying to process that right now. Freeze this one. Watts will peel the front two. Then you'll change the angles a little bit, and then Watts will have a hit. That's my guess. Big opportunity here for Newfoundland Labrador. Ooh, he's narrow. He's all over the front one. So much for my prediction. He's not there for weight. Well, I know. You got to go for the. Yep, 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 yep. Trying to see if they can keep the angles okay. Now, is that queued up to do something? Not it's really. aimed at the top yellow one, so they're safe in that regard. They still technically have three guards. Both reds are low can, enough that a I slash is hard, enough, enough but possible. Now, the one thing I would say watching PEI play is he tends to be in the now with his calls. He's very rarely... If I do this now, I'll have I this on the so next too. one. We really I saw that in the first game. So yeah. I expect him to go after something now. So he could do a slash on this red one. 
Because if it goes across this way, like wrong color, but it's okay. The yellow spins out this way, and he's going to be sitting shot. Not two, but he'll still be sitting shot. He could play a, you know, a straight back on the guards out front, because that'll take out two yellows. You'd lose the yellow in the front of the house, because this one will go this way, because there's a rock coming down we may, we may from the top. A little bit off that outside then there's going to be a single guard on a yellow with four other reds in the house. Yeah, that's what, that's that would be a very back. nice position as well. But again, once, once we Terry once tends to be, out, what's the best thing I can do in this moment? So he's basically just trying to chisel that red one sideways. Hope that made sense. <laughs> I think he's actually trying to come across the face maybe too. That would be tough, but yeah, back eight weight. You're probably right. Well, Terry's rock now. Terry. Terry's rock now. Tracking. Oh, yeah. Terry, all you got. All you got, Terry. All you got. So he's trying to play hit and roll off of his own. I'm not entirely sure it was there, to be frank. But that's a good position. That sets him up that for... That yellow's looking awfully lonely in yeah. there. Yeah, that was not a bad choice. I'm on, I'm on board with that. That's a great setup shot. And just the way he walked up to them, it looked like he was trying to just angle the red across, but that's a great shot. So now he has a better angle in that same spot. That is by far the most dangerous rock right now for Newfoundland, that one that yeah. just appeared. I think this is probably safest. This going here would be an absolutely well, disastrous shot if he leaves that open for PEI on their last one. I get that there's some other rocks in play on this side, so he's considering can I bring this one in and sit more? You could even go this way, push that one that way, and come across here. The easiest shot is put a guard up here, <laughs> but now you're basically saying, okay, if you get mine out, game is over. I think they'll call a timeout. We'll listen in to their discussion. It's a pretty tough shot. You know, he makes his ball game, so it's pretty tough, though. Okay, he well, that's just, that's he very just hard. Half, half end break, so we'll it's probably gonna go here all day anyways, but still. That, that's very tough, I think. I think you're... I think we just Garrett away here. You've got to touch that one. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. <laughs> just Garrett away. Just we, just, we just gotta make sure we put the breeze yep. out of the spot. I don't see Whoa. a ton of benefits. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Yep. Whoa! Unless you get it, like, Whoa. directly Hi. in here. Whoa. It's really good, Whoa. but... Whoa! Shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it. It's pretty good, too. I think we just make the guard. Okay. Good conversation. I will defend Nick on this one. Guard is by far the easiest. A great chance to set up a potential steal. Even with those other ones. And that takes away the easiest shot for Prince Edward Island too, I think. Oh, absolutely. That that short angle is the shot that Terry just threw. I would hate to give him the exact same shot again. Yes, there's an in-off for three or four and some other dynamic, crazy shots. But you know what? I'm going to take away the easy one and say you you make it. If it was curling enough, you could come to the inside of this one, but it just simply isn't curling that hard. So the guards and it accomplishes the much the same thing. Protects, takes away that uh, halfway angle raise. Yeah. Halfway. Whoa, let it work for a second. Let it work. Whoa. Even if you're just edge on edge to the red one, it's good enough. The guard just has to be on the red one, visually. Trying to get this to curl a little bit. It's moving. I think they're okay. I think. Yeah, they're fine. It closed the hole. Great shot. And far enough out that you don't play the yellow onto red either, so. Oh, absolutely. Great placement. So, yes, this is the shot that they suspected Dennis would take on. Is there is there the potential for... A lot? An excuse me points. <laughs> Generally speaking, they're going to come into the inside of this one and roll across here. 
Try to contact the front of the yellow and make it squirt back here somewhere. Don't that should be yellow, but that's okay. Peel. That's basically what they're after. He just called peel, which as long as you can put the ice, it doesn't really matter what weight you pick, yeah. frankly. Anything normal or up. Yeah. And it'll be fun to watch. I'm just trying to decide if you can get away with something. Like hit the side of the other red one, but it, that, that back red one's kind of a catcher for the yellow. Newfoundland is kind of happy that that red is at the back of the four foot. <laughs> here we go. Dennis Watts, last shot here in the seventh end. Well, they're calling Terry on, which means they don't have enough of it. So it will be a steal of one for Team Newfoundland Labrador and a tie game coming home. Prince Edward Island will have the hammer when we come back for the eighth end right after this. Here we go, eighth end action in a tie game. What has been a dandy game between Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland Labrador here in draw nine of the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship. I keep saying draw nine, it's draw 10 here at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. And it will be a 3-3 game after Newfoundland Labrador steals one in the seventh. PEI will play the tick. And this should be a dandy finish, Gord. Well, here's a coach moment for you. My question would be, has PEI practiced this? If you don't practice the tick, don't call the tick. You've done a good job of playing into the forefoot. Be the first one to the can if you Play haven't your practiced it. Yep. I've seen a lot of people lose because this shot gets <laughs> erratically thrown and then you've wasted a rock. I think uh, that scenario is going to play out right here. We'll stay up there and that'll land Newfoundland Labrador in the rings. Into the forefoot on straight ice. Well, straight-ish ice. Yeah, I, I, I would have, I would say that that was not playing to what they've done well all game so far. If they did just draw on top forefoot, that'd have been not a bad choice. A little bit more, yeah. You're in here. Three. All games now into the eighth end. It is BC trailing 4-2 to Alberta with Hammer in the eighth end. Northwest Territories take a 6-5 lead and Last Rock into the eighth end after Northern Ontario is forced to a single in the seventh. And in the other game, it is Yukon with a 7-5 lead going into the final end. All the scores all the time, curling.ca slash scoreboard curling.ca slash scoreboard as things set up to determine the championship pool that will start play the final eight. Games will begin in the championship pool tomorrow. We'll have three more draws of coverage here on Curling Canada's YouTube channel from the 2022 Canadian Mixed. So we saw a really long guard put into play. And now they're just playing a nice soft hit and flop. That's good. Got the hit and a little flop. Good enough. Now Butler is sitting there looking at his guard being the guard for the opponent's rock. Do we come here? Do we just freeze? I think it's too early to just dead cold draw the open side. Especially, well, it's long enough you could get fully buried, but I think I would use that red one as backing for a little while. All right. 
similar weight all game. I wouldn't even be opposed to this coming up a hair short and being the second guard. I realize Red has one biting the forefoot, but that still leaves you with four feet to outdraw. And the guard on the other side is so long you could do it. Just bounces out a little into the open. And left the reciprocal bounce and flop back under. But Terry decided last in that guard wasn't what he wanted, so probably wisely just going to clean up. I quite like this. Chance at the double deal here as well. You can even drive this into the yellow in the house if it over curls. There's a lot of ways this can work out for you. Terry Watts. Terry Arsenal, pardon me. I think I've been getting the names backwards. My apologies. Good throw there by Terry. Good. Clears out the front of the house. Parallel. Two and a half. I missed the call. Two guard. Well, now Butler has to has to build an advantage for himself. Probably going to see a handful of guards. I'd certainly try a guard a few or three, two or three in a row, and then if that doesn't work, then come down to the freeze. Don't want to be heavy with this. Don't want to fully bury the red one. You want to be probably just fully across the center line. That's about right. Just straight PL over top. Same thing. The corner guard's not a danger, so there's no reason to go after the double peel. Yep. Oh, he's a bit inside. Yep. Yep. Gary Arsenal. Okay. Well, oh, oh. got rid of the guard. Not quite the way he planned, but no real change. <laughs> I do have to say that that changed the angle enough that the more, simple hit and roll on the red one's a little bit trickier now. So he may get baited into the freeze sooner, if you know what I mean. Like right. you throw a perfect corner or, or just off center line guard, the hit and roll on the red one's harder now that that yellow is closer to the center line. Really good. Wait's fine. It's got to finish over. You definitely have to get this to curl enough to give yourself port as an option. You got to cross center. You got to cross center up here. I don't think it needs curl. I, I would call that under curled, but they're just going to rip it anyway, so you're going to be okay with that. Otherwise, you would have had to play a, a short run back to get rid of the red one off that side yellow. And the angle is, there's the potential for the jam and seeing that yellow rock bounce back over the, the center guard too. So you gotta be careful with the angle here. Clean. If you're Jackie Reed. Yep. It's yep. starting to curl early. Yep. Getting really close to nose. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's that scenario that Newfoundland Labrador has been looking for. Guard is up. Fortunate too that that uh, didn't completely jam. Absolutely. Now you got a couple choices here. You can play the draw through the port. You can play the draw past your yellow, which I kind of prefer because you can chip off the side of your yellow and, and control the roll. You could even play a split on your own if you really trust the path because then you're going to be fully buried underneath of the center guard. I prefer this side as the draw. Yeah, I think it'll finish. You should get past the yellow one. 
Aaron Porter. There's the danger of setting up a double, so chipping the yellow one across the wouldn't be terrible. Whoa! Brooke Truck! That chip might happen. There it goes. That's a lot of weight, but. I really don't mind that because yeah. there's no double with the way those are sitting. That's kind of where I was thinking is that had you played an angle tap on that yellow that had been stationary, it would have been fully buried under and your shooter would have rolled a little bit lower, which would have baited PEI into a hit and roll, which is a harder shot, frankly. Like the hit and roll to be shot in about a 30% execution. Anyways, this isn't bad. You're in control of the front of the house. But if you're in a situation like Newfoundland Labrador, you, you, you're pretty happy with the way things are looking right at this point. Especially with them not peeling that front guard. I would, I'd still be going after that center guard. The, the rocks are high enough up that they're not a major danger. They're barely in the eight foot. Yes, Allison. If you're not taking out both yellows, you're still leaving them with a chance to get one deeper into the four foot. If you trust that port, that's a great shot. I've never met a port I trusted, if I'm being honest, <laughs> Gord, but... Well, it's it's not a huge gap, and we've seen a couple of rocks jump unexpectedly. So that's what I mean by if you if you trust that you can put your broom down and get it go, because you got to get that almost no. So you're basically trying to split the port right in the middle, which is a not traditional thing to do with a draw. If, do you know what I mean by that? So Newfoundland Labrador will call a timeout. Your draw is traditionally going to cross over, which is then going to split in an unnatural kind of way. So we'll listen into what they say. We do this. He just makes easy runs, probably. No, but just there. This has got to stick on the tee line, yeah. This hopefully doesn't have any piece of that. You might dead run that. That's what I mean. Like dead tap it. Not yeah, even more. touch our yellow. <laughs> that, but that's, that's what I'm trying to take away as well. Right, right. Can we get enough curl? Should be. Can you yeah. just. Yeah. This rock I mean, is problematic. I'd love to just draw, but I don't know. Well, what do you like? Do you like doing this? Yeah. And he does this, and then we're only in the top eight. <laughs> he has the whole house to draw to. I think they have to play this, but. It's a real, it's a real tight port too. I think we have to though. Even if you, even if you dead knows it, like knows might be better than what we call. I think you have to hair cross so it doesn't yeah. give an easy double. Okay, so then dead knows right tap. There and push yeah, that but to but that. I'm just saying, Brooke, if we just do that, then he dead, he dead does this. But and hopefully, then, then yeah, we then can do that. My my only okay. a shade cross will okay. be that. All right. So what we want to do? And then we're then we're full four, making nose. him draw the yeah. button. Real yes. close to nose. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Right on the nose. Yeah. Shouldn't move very much here. I don't think so. This is I'm, draw the button. Nothing yeah, moves. I'm thinking there. With back button, hey? With back button, yes. Okay. You got it. Will. Well, I like their conversation. Uh, if you can get to nose, I like the tap. Otherwise, I don't mind just dead nosing the red one, because then if. Watts does hit the yellow one, you have a three foot tap, right? Like that's not a bad situation to be in. And then he has to play weird angles. So I, I see both of them. I don't mind this call, but you, you gotta be confident you can get roughly nose on this one. Even across the face, just a tad would be a good outcome as well. As long as you don't set up a double, yeah. It'd be a tough double, so I'm not too afraid of that. Well, Butler's first shot. The eighth end. It's going to be on the guard, is it? Or I no, think he's the guard. Yep. Oh, that's a tough outcome. Well, manager roll. Cover that. Oh. Okay. That's okay. not a bad outcome. <laughs> that's making the most out of the situation. Yep. You're still shot, that's and you've like thrown a guard on that shot rock. Kind of You've guarded red. their Catch easy this, tap as well, so that was happens. definitely the right way so to miss that. We do that, he's doing this, and I can at least have that draw. 
No. That, so then he's really blocking off everything, right? So I either do that or I try and... Yeah, but I'd rather have a, an open side over here, right? Running that's not going to... I'm curious to see what yeah, they no, talk he said he's, through. He's going he's gonna to do this. He's going to go right there and make me draw around him. So, but I, I do that. Because the other one, the other one is run the yellow. I like the red. Personally. Yep. That's my gut call. I'm just going to throw normal. Three quarter. Basically, try to run the red back to the yellow, and at the worst, open it up. It's normal weight. First final to report, UConn yep. has capped a two-win day to close I'll out the preliminary pool. They score an 8-5 win over Nunavut, and they will finish preliminary round robin play at 2-4. and four. Give me Nunavut a little more. at 1-5. Sure. I'd rather straight peel it than nose. Nice positive or conversation there. Peel is better than nose. just came up a little bit on this side, so... Whoa. Gotta be close. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. That's right. No, just peel. So they were absolutely right. By just straight peeling, they're gonna have to deal with that red rock and try to make his shot as hard as possible. But he does have the forefoot to draw to. I can also tell you that the Northwest Territories scored one in the eighth end and they finish off a 7-5 win over Northern Ontario and that will put we do this, Northwest Territories into the championship to, pool with a 4-1 and one record. Okay. Northern like Ontario it? finishes the preliminary pool at 4-2. Okay. Right All right, nose hitting. Just try your darndest to make their last shot difficult. There's no way to make your shot rock more shot. There's no way to take away the whole half of the sheet. So just make it as hard as possible. Final shot of this game, probably for Will Butler, the Newfoundland Labrador skip. Yep. Yep. Hold and made. And Dennis Watts will call a timeout. I like the little roll away. It's kind of awkwardly in the middle of everything. It's, but I mean, otherwise I'm trying to get right there, right? So this gives me a lot more. They said we can rub off that coming. I think right there. I think we're still 310. Sweet. So he's going to try and come through the hole. Well, the nice thing is, is you can actually bounce off the tight what yellow. It's going to direct you back to the forefoot. So if you throw T-line weight at this and it over curls a little bit, you can chap off, as the curling the world likes to say, and roll into the forefoot. And you're still going to score your point. What do we need to So this is basically just draw the pin. He's not wide. They're on it early. Not heavy if you're asked the sweepers. Line's good. Line's good. Line's good. Line's really good. Doesn't look like it's cramping up, so just carry it down to the full foot. All you guys. Keep it going. Keep it going. Come on. Little light. Come on. And it will be a steal of two for Newfoundland Labrador, and they will take a 5-3 victory to close out the first round, the preliminary round here at the 2022 Canadian Mixed. For color commentator Gord Coppathorn, this is Al Cameron saying so long for Prince Albert, and join us again tonight, 6 p.m., for more action from the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship in Prince Albert.